Welcome from My Slice of Life, where I'm helping to bring more joy into yours. This is the My Slice of Life podcast. Hello and a very warm welcome to you. This is the My Slice of Life podcast. If you are new here, I am very glad you turned up. And if you have been before, I am so glad you're here again. Thank you. Um, This is going to be the penultimate show. Is that the way you say it? Second last of the season. Um, And then I'll see what I can come up with for next time. If you have ideas and suggestions, by the way, you can get in touch through the blog. Um, There's also a thing I put up on the community page on my uh, YouTube channel. So have a look there if you have some ideas for next season. So today we are going to be looking at foods, foodstuffs, where I'm asking you, are you still buying this? Why aren't you making it? Should we be making it? Yeah, it's a big title. I haven't really worked it out yet. I will by the time I put it up. Um, And again, when I say you, I'm kind of saying me, because there's things here that I'm thinking I should be making this myself instead of wasting money on the absolute crap that the shops sell. But before I get to that, let me fill you in. Do you remember last week I said, oh, well, if you're new here, you won't, but so go and check it out. Um, if you are the listener, then you'll remember. So, you know, thanks. Um, I was saying, oh, what a week we've had and blah, blah. And it, well, it was, everything was terrible. Well, although I'm here to bring more joy to your slice of life coming from mine, take the joy because our slice of life in this house has been absolute crap this week. Uh, what have we had? See, last week we did have the dentist. Remember I said put the car in for an MOT? I'm still waiting for it. Still waiting. That's over a week. I phoned up at the beginning of the week and was told, oh, we haven't had time to look at it yet. I'll give you a call. So I'm not going to bother. I'm just getting used to it. I got my bike sorted yesterday. But I'm also on the verge, possibly, of a chest infection. I am fighting that. Now, again, if you've been before, I did five home remedies. I am fighting this with the garlic and honey recipe that I described on that episode and also with fire cider and basically orange juice and everything I can get my hands on. So I am fighting this bad boy like you wouldn't believe. So yeah, so I've, I've, if I sound a wee bit, you know, more kind of croaky and hoarse than usual, that is why. Uh, so we had that because uh, yeah, her son was ill last week and because I didn't have the car, remember I'd put the car away so I thought I'll do an online order with a certain supermarket put the order in on the Wednesday night, it was supposed to come on the Thursday, no show now, it was supposed to come between like 7 and 9 at night by 20 past 10, yeah you heard me right, 20 past 10 that night, I was on to their, what do you call customer service if you're aware of George Carlin and his customer service, he was spot on. But that's when they told me that the driver couldn't find the address. So he just took your order back to the store. So I wasn't too happy about that. So there's a few things ongoing at the moment. Let's dive into this topic, will we? So I'm kind of playing around with the title. Is it basic foods we should be making ourselves? Or why are you still wasting money buying this? When you look at the actual ingredients of these things, um, I've got a wee list of 10 things here. They're kind of basic things. And I've, I don't know about you, but I'm really trying to look at the ingredients list and the back of packets and things. I'm not a scientist. I don't know what this stuff is. We're eating this crap. What does it mean? Anything modified, if it has the word modified, I don't touch it. I know they don't put genetically modified, but they used to. And then everything suddenly was just modified and the genetically was taken out of it. So I'm not touching it as much as, but I don't touch that and I don't touch sweeteners. But the first thing on my list where I'm going to ask, why are you buying this? And I say this because guess what? Last week I bought a jar and I'm standing there going, make it yourself, you silly cow. And I just haven't had time and I felt like crap. I didn't do it and we can make a million excuses. And we do. Mayonnaise. Why are we buying mayonnaise? It takes a little bit of effort to make, I'll grant you. There's tons of recipes online. My personal favourite, I like that I've got a a nice recipe for garlic mayonnaise, which, by the way, if you want to go on to Charles Dowding's YouTube channel 
and he has a video somewhere talking about, you know, although it's all about growing, he's starting to do videos about what to do with the stuff once you've grown it. And he did a celeriac thing. <laughs> I can't remember what he called it exactly, with like a garlic mayonnaise. And I'm calling it that because I can't pronounce it. Is it e e only? Aioli oh whatever, garlic mayonnaise. But I use his recipe. But mayonnaise is basically what a couple of egg yolks, some olive oil, mustard powder, I don't know, bits and pieces, salt and pepper. I mean there's not much to it. The only thing is, as far as I can make out, everything has to be at room temperature. You gotta keep whisking it, you don't stop. And when you add the oil, you put in a little bit at a time and just keep whisking it. And then boom, mayonnaise. Easy. I nearly swore there, but I'm trying really hard not to. I don't know how sensitive your ear holes are. I'm quite fluent in the old sweary, so I'm trying my best to behave. The second thing, now I don't know, depends where you are, if you have this or if this is what you call it, but like here, we just got salad cream. Do you get salad cream? I much prefer my tuna with salad cream than mayonnaise. It's just got more punch to it and more spice. I have found one recipe in a book that I have and again it's very very simple it had like um, a bit of mustard salt pepper a little bit of sugar some double cream oil splash a bit of oil and a bit of vinegar that's what gives it that wee that bite and I'm sure there's other recipes online and I have made it a couple of times and it, it was really it's just like the bought stuff but without all the preservatives and the unpronounceable crap that they put in their stuff I mean I can say cream, vinegar, oil, mustard. You know, I can say all these things. I know what they are. But the stuff that I buy in the shop, I don't know what this stuff is. Anyway, no E numbers if you make it yourself. So I started thinking, you know, what are these things that we're buying that we don't need to? And one in the summer, I think a lot of people just grab it when they're in the store and they just, you know, grab a lettuce, grab a cucumber, grab the salad dressing, and I used to be guilty of this. But this year I've started doing something a little different and I've been experimenting. I think a lot of us are quite frightened to experiment. I got some olive oil, some vinegar. It was apple cider vinegar, which I made myself last year for the first time ever. I made so much of it, I'm still using it. So I'll do like a splash of this and a splash of that. So the oil and vinegar, a bit of salt and pepper. You could put in bit of mustard powder. I like crushed garlic in mine and some honey and that's basically all I use. But like I say you go online I mean you could have you know use the French vinaigrette, you have your honey salad dressings, the one for the Caesar salad. If you can think of it you can make a dressing out of it. Why are we buying this? And the thing when you make it yourself and say you only want it for, you know, a couple of days, because let's face it, salad is in your fridge. It's not going to last forever. Even though we might have one day where we're really good and we eat a lot of salad, the next day, if you're anything like me, I kind of waver a little. So it could be a couple of days before I come back to that dressing. I don't want to waste my money buying something and then I'm not using it. If I make it myself, I don't know, do you not find if you make it yourself, you make more of a point of using it? It's like, pff, that cost me time and effort. I'll be damned if that's going to waste. Salad dressings. There's thousands of recipes online. Or just make it up. Make it up. Now, speaking of making it up, here's one that, again, I used to buy this stuff and I just thought, why didn't anybody tell me this could be so easy? Spaghetti sauce or pasta sauce. It's the same thing. Whatever. We all know those jars. Those nice little jars. That nice little click as you just pour it over your pasta. And I used to do that. And it costs quite a lot of money. And depending on which one you buy, I mean, the basics are going to be like tin of tomatoes, chopped tomatoes, or use passata. I know our son doesn't like the bits of tomato. So I just put in passata. Here's what I do, right? Here's what I do. If I'm making my own sauce, and there's a wee sneaky tip here coming up, but I will chop up an onion finely. I will chop up a couple of cloves of garlic. I love my garlic. So I'll chop that up. Now I will cook them gently in a little olive oil, right? Get it nice and sizzly, you know, do the chef thing. It's all good. Chuck in your passata. I'm trying to think. I don't get it in jars. I get it in little boxes. I'm trying to think what 
box. Chuck it, pour in whatever the passata comes in, pour it into the pan that you've just cooked your garlic and your onion. And apologies if I'm a little wheezy there. I'm trying real hard here. So pour in your passata, right? Now the thing when you're cooking with tomatoes, put in a little sprinkle of sugar. It just takes that, it's not sourness, but tomatoes need a little sweetening, put it that way. So do that, okay? Mix it up real nice. Now keep it down low or it splatters all over the place like lava. So when you've done that, check your herb cupboard. If you have things like, I chuck in rosemary, oregano, basil. If you have a little pot of basil on the cooker, on the kitchen windowsill or whatever. Actually, I moved mine because of the flies. It was horrendous. But yeah, chuck in bits of them. All the Mediterranean herbs. Just throw them in. Cook it so that it thickens up. But I usually leave mine on low for about 20 minutes. Yeah, it depends. Um, there you go. Job done. Taste it. Put in a little bit of salt if you want. Take a little taste. If it's too, I don't know, not enough flavour for you, put in a little bit more herbs. Leave it to cook for a while. You're making it yourself. That's the point. You can make it to how you like it. But it's so easy. So what have we got there? Garlic, tomato, uh, tomato, tomato passata. Oh, put in tomato paste if you want. That's quick. People chuck that in. And some herbs, you know, onion. I mean, that's it. It's really, really, really simple and fresh. Okay. Now, what you can do and what I do, if it's quite runny as a sauce, you know, for my, for my pasta, I thicken it up. Now, you can either leave it to, to cook for a little while, you know, and get the moisture out of it. Or if you're running short of time, do you know the little corn flour trick? You know, a teaspoon of corn flour and a little thing, add a little water, mix it to a little paste chuck it in your sauce it'll thicken it right up use that as your pizza sauce base same thing that's what i do i'll make a double batch and then i'll keep it, it freezes as well so you can freeze it and then the next time you're making pizzas which is actually on the list we'll come to that in just a second i know i'm jumping the gun it's what i do but there you go you've got your pizza sauce and your pasta sauce out the one batch it's fantastic don't buy it make it so here we come to another one, and this will double up again. I'm going to say it. Bread. I know, we all buy bread. I buy bread. But just sometimes, couldn't we make our own? There are probably more bread recipes than people on the planet. Surely, surely, yeah, don't call me surely. Surely we could make one now and again. I was actually planning to make a sourdough loaf. Now, I'm I will be the first to admit a lot of my breads, I have been nicely told, could be used to build a house with. I, you know, I'm, if you want a brick, I can make you a brick. But I think it's just I wasn't needing it long enough or leaving it long enough. Whereas now, because I'm a little more forgetful, it actually helps with the bread making because, you know, you have to leave it to rise. Sometimes I leave it and by the time I get to it, it's spilling over the bowl. So that's, that's good. But yeah, make a bread. And there's, like I say, just start with something really, really, really basic. And what I like, and this again, it'll tie up with the last one. If you can make a basic bread, there you go, you just made pizza dough. It's the same thing. Just instead of putting it into a loaf tin, divide it in four and just roll out one of them. Put on the sauce you just made. Boom, you've got your own pizzas. We don't need to buy all their chemical laden crap. We can make our own. Let's bring the joy back into our kitchens, folks. We can do this. I know we can. And I'm not saying all this just to try and cheer myself up and make myself feel better. I know we can do this. So there we go. Look, we've made our spaghetti sauce. We've made our bread, which in turn has helped us make our pizzas. We're winning here. Now, if we can make bread, we can make crackers and breadsticks. I've actually got a, a really simple sourdough cracker recipe, which at some point I will be putting on the blog. So keep an eye out for that. I really will do it. It's simple. So if you do sourdough, look out for it. In fact, it's the only crackers I make because I like them so much. And you can really adjust them to your own taste. But again, if you can make bread, breadsticks is simple. We don't need, to, honestly, folks, you look at even a packet of breadsticks. They put so much salt into it. They put so much these preservatives and things. If 
you make your own and there's maybe a, a certain herb or even a spice, I make my stuff spicy. I can't get really spicy crackers in the shop. I can make my own and I can make them really hot. You know, if I'm sitting, I make a nice dip. And again, oh, that's not even on the list. Dips, there you go, I forgot to put dips on the list. They're easy to make as well. Can of beans, not baked beans, what do you call them? Chickpeas, chickpeas, I use mine with chickpeas. Right, get your chickpeas, whiz it up, shove in a, a squished garlic clove. You can tell I'm really good here, I've given recipes. <laughs> um, some olive oil, whiz it all up, bit of lemon juice, you know, adjust and then chuck in some herb put in smoke paprika whatever you liked we can this easy it's done again if you're not sure and my instructions aren't clear enough and you know i'll try not to be hurt if you find them a bit difficult to follow <laughs> but look look on them um, oh crikey who do i use the good is it the good food site are you i like that one I actually tell you a good you know the tesco store they i don't know if you get them but online their recipes are really good jamie oliver's recipes are really good he's got a fantastic site online so we have our breadsticks or crackers we can make our dip i must write that on my list because i forgot about that so we've got our i've got our pizzas we've done all these things so then i'm going to come to breaded chicken or fish I know, and for years I didn't do this either. But if you can make bread, you can whiz a couple of slices up in your blitzer thing. Yeah, fancy technical term. Boom, you've got you get breadcrumbs. You get your bit of chicken. Just coat it in the flour. You have to have a uh, three bowls out. So one has your flour, one has your whisked egg, and the other one will have your breadcrumbs. Coat whether it's fish or chicken or whatever you know turkey slices you have whatever but I'm talking proper meat obviously you know so it's like chicken breast so you're gonna roll it in the flour that will help the egg stick to it so then you roll it in your egg then you roll it in your breadcrumbs and then stick it in the oven there you go you don't have to buy the boxed stuff you can do it yourself easy all these things just I think sometimes we have the time we we'll keep telling ourselves we don't have the time but we do what we don't have sometimes is just the confidence, I think, or even sometimes the imagination. I mean, how many if, how many people out there, if you listen to this, have you got fish fillets in your freezer right now and you're thinking, I'll make something with that. Oh, there you go. You know, coat them in breadcrumbs. Easy. Another thing that I always used to buy, and I've got to admit I haven't bought any of it for so uh, years now, years, curry sauce. Again, it's a thing people buy in jars and packets and, you know, chuck over their meat or their veg or whatever, and it's so simple. And again, you can, so many varieties you can make. You can add anything to it. A lot of the sauces, especially the curry types, it's basically just like, you know, your typical onion and garlic. That'll start off pretty much anything. And then most of them will have some sort of like a tin of tomatoes and then a variety of herbs and spices. That's it. And again, if it's too watery, use the corn flour trick to thicken it up. But these are these are things that are so easy to find online. And it's also a great way of using up like tins if you have chickpeas or beans, like butter beans or you know whatever type of beans that you, you, you put in the cupboard and you think, oh, I'll get to them lentils pat you know these tins of lentils fantastic way to use all this stuff up curry sauce you don't like them hot they don't have to be hot you want a korma put cream in it you know there's things that you can do just to make it make it your own again i've got to admit i quite like mine really spicy other people don't so i'll make a basic one and then split half into another saucepan so they can have the basic mild one and i will make mine strong enough to blow your head off it's fantastic. So if you don't do it, I really urge you, give it a go. And the last thing that I'm going to urge you to do, to try anyway, cordials. See, when we go to the shop and we're looking for some sort of cordial, diluting juice as it's called here, and I look at the back of these bottles to see what's in it, my heart sinks. You know, you see people, the families putting it in their trolley and I'm just thinking, do you realise what utter crap you are drinking? 
you know, the kids just drinking absolute garbage. I mean, our son even, <laughs> I've got him trained in one thing, he will check the back of the bottles and go, ah, damn it, sweeteners, I'm not getting that. Because we're just not doing it. We're not going to play that game. And again, it's another thing that is really, really simple. Takes a little time. Really simple. I grow rhubarb. And I got a lovely, lovely recipe for a rhubarb cordial. In fact, I think I found it in the Tesco. Remember I about the Tesco recipe site? It was rhubarb and star anise cordial. Fantastic. And you cannot... Not that I've seen, you cannot buy that in the shop. I've never seen it. They do the recipe, but they don't seem to sell their own version. So, oh, did I just whistle? Apologies. Um, so, yeah, these are things you can't buy, but by God, you can make them. So, I urge you, if you don't currently make any of these things, pick one this week and try it. Give it a go. Make your own. Bring the joy back into your kitchen again. I am going to try, I am actually going to try some of this again. I do, like I say, I do my own crackers. I haven't made bread for a while. I am going to do that. I did make spaghetti sauce at the start of the week. The one thing I haven't made for a while is like the mayonnaise and the salad cream. I really want to get back to that. And cordial. I must, must make my cordial. And a curry sauce. Yeah, I know. I'm letting things slide a little bit, am I? Okay, so together, friends. Friend whoever's listening we can do this can't we come on pick something let's go make it let's bring the joy back into our kitchens together okay that's it for this week like i say next week is the last episode in this season which i hope you have enjoyed if you can if you can think of anybody that you think would like this let them know about it spread the word i will be forever grateful but thank you for listening this week So until next time, you take care of your wee self. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the My Slice of Life podcast. Don't forget to look up the blog. It's at myslicemyblog.wordpress.com Also the YouTube channel, which is at myslicechannel. And if you would like to become a patron of the show, go to patreon.com forward slash myslice. Thanks again and I'll see you next week.